Um, it's known as the day the music died. On the 3rd of February 1959, Buddy Holly, Richie Balance and Big Bopper were killed in a plane crash. And it is said that music history changed then forever. Yes, Buddy Holly's death uh, left his band, the Crickets, without their pioneering front man. The task of replacing the irreplaceable fell to our next guest, that's Jerry Naylor, who became the band's lead singer back in 1960. 54 years later, he's back with a new material, harking back to his time as a cricket and paying tribute to his predecessor. Before we speak to Jerry, let's remind ourselves of the music that helped define a generation. Teardrops fall like rain. And Jerry's here with us now, talking us through some of those images we're seeing. The <laughs> early bits, th those were some of your singing. The last clip we saw there was, of course, Buddy Holly, Buddy Holly. and the cricket. That, was, that would have been 1957 or, or, or early, maybe 58, and probably an Ed, Ed Sullivan show. And just talk us through that sequence. Extra I mean, in many ways, an extraordinary sequence. Tragedy that led to, to effectively your career being launched. Well, Charlie, I think one of the biggest things is, can you imagine the the impulse the, the 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 influence and and all that that Buddy Holly gave in only 18 months, mm. and, and it's hard to, it's hard for me even at this point to understand that it was only 18 months of his of his career from 1957 uh, to the 1959 plane crash a tragedy. But in that he was able to come here twice. I think if he hadn't, that would have been really something, and go to Australia, and with the crickets of course and. Then uh, the tragedy, and I knew them. I didn't know Buddy well, but I was in West Texas, I, and, and, I, and but I followed them obviously, as we all did. We all wanted to be that, you know. Roy Orbison and all of us who grew up in West Texas. You know, there's, a, there's a great story about the three nights in West Texas. If we have time to, to talk about that, it'd be marvelous. But. It's when Elvis came, and Elvis influenced all of us. I mean, he opened the doors and let us, uh, and that was in uh, January 5th, 6th, and 7th of mm -hmm. 1955. But Buddy Holly had this magic about him. And there was a great, there was a great review uh, when he came over, and I loved it. I used it in our book and in the documentary. And it was, uh, I, and I, I'm sorry, I don't remember who the, the reviewer was, but it said, Buddy Holly walked out on stage carrying this Fender guitar like a shotgun. <laughs> and uh, he had he took control, mm. and <clears throat> there was so much. But let me tell you, at the point where I was asked to be the lead singer of the Crickets after all that, I said no. I was frightened. Well, I mean, you say you know everybody wanted to be that. There's there's a big leap between wanting to be that leap. and being asked to be well, that. Well, it really was. And I mean, there's a there's a fun. Did you know that comes that. Million um, was in a book from Maury Dean, uh, on a history book of Buddy Holly, and said um, there were millions of singers who wanted to be uh, the new lead singer yes. of the Crickets, right. including Paul McCartney and, and Bob Dylan, and Naylor got the job. <laughs> but it was, um, it, was, it, was, it, was, it was something very serious to me, and I was very frightened. I didn't play guitar. You know, I don't look like Buddy Holly. I could sing like that, and I just re recorded a song mm. that uh, was similar to that. But um, I got the job, and I was afraid, literally, that I would stand in front of uh, Jerry Allison's drum in the, in the shadow of Buddy Holly in the first tour we would do, and a spear would be coming through my heart from the fans saying, yeah. you're not Buddy Holly. But it didn't happen that way. No. We came here. It was a love affair. The fans, the best fans in the world are here, and that's why we're back. <laughs> well, yeah, you're talking about being back now, so let's have a little look at uh, something a little more recent. <laughs> I'm sitting in my dressing room just listening to the echoes of the music that we made when our hearts were 
on fire And I still love you, Peggy Sue Material. As you can probably tell, Jerry uh, <laughs> talks quite a bit. He's, he's explaining everything. But j just tell people, I mean, why, why do an, a, a song now harking back? Is, it, is this a set of nod to the past? What is that? Well, it's a nod to the past. And what we're doing is we're pulling the legacy of Buddy Holly and the crickets in that period. You know, that'll be the day Peggy Sue and, and the, those great hits. Uh, and then we're putting together the post Buddy Holly crickets, pulling that forward from 1961 uh, to 1965. And and then moving that that's with don't ever change my little girl teardrops of rain bobby beamish crickets album is one of the biggest uh, it ranks number two in all of the albums of buddy holly and so forth and that was our first uh, and it just went viral yeah. and so we did the we did the if you remember the tour of 1962 it was the bobby v meets the crickets tour and we just had a grand time I wasn't and we quite met old a, enough. I know I know <laughs> I, I know I know no, well, well, anyway. your father would tell you about it can i just <laughs> sorry, ask I'm you sorry. Uh, uh, people of a certain vintage in a certain place you mentioned elvis a while ago yes. i have to ask what was elvis like he I was marvelous he was like a young man he he was um, he never grew up and he was a great friend. Uh, from the first time I met him, which was January 5th, 1955, and we became friends. Next night, we played, he was in San Angelo, Texas, my hometown. The next night, it was in Lubbock, and Buddy saw him and said, that's exactly what I want to do, because all the girls were rushing it <laughs> up mm. to the stage. But he said, that's why I want to do no more country music, I want to do that. And the next night, it was in Midland, Texas, a triangular thing in West Texas. And there was Roy Orbison, who was doing the Wink Westerners. He was doing, you know, cowboy songs, if you will, Western songs, uh, like Ray Price and, and others. And uh, he immediately did the same thing. I want to do what Elvis Presley does. And he did. And the three of us um, were sort of a launch from, as a result of Elvis Presley, uh, of all of that. But Elvis was the firecracker. He was the thing, we called it the Big Bang. And starting in 1954, but that's really what changed everything mm. and, and created rock and roll. Um, just really quickly, um, so many, so many things to talk to you about, but the crickets um, inspired apparently, and I don't know if you can tell me if this is true, the Beatles to have their name. Indeed, they called, we were, when we were here in 1962, uh, they, they were called the Quarrymen, and then they, they sort of flirted with silver, uh, silver Beatles, and they finally asked us if, uh, through EMI, some friends, we uh, yeah. people there, they said, could we, in a very nice letter, could we, uh, uh, could we call ourselves the Beatles because of the crickets? And I love the crickets. And what they did is they recorded, in, in, instead of all these great songs that they had, in 1963, when they were first on BBC uh, radio, they, instead of, for me to be, for me to you, please believe me, I started standing there, all those great songs they had, they sang, don't ever change. They sang our song. Now, earlier, they had recorded in, in 1958, they had recorded at the lo local co-op, you know, with a few shillings yeah. and things. They did That'll Be The Day. So you put those two things together, there was really a love fest going on there. Oh. And, and they admit that. And bless them, we love you for it. Uh, oh, Jerry, lovely to see really you. Really lovely to see Thanks you. Thanks so much. This is oh, great. I'm not sure we've spoken to a guest who speaks so much. It's brilliant. Uh, Jerry's new single, <laughs> I Still Love You, Peggy Sue, is out on Monday. And the Rockabilly Legends 50th anniversary album is out the following week. Thank you. And may I say, we're going to... We're having a, a really party. We're having a real party, a celebration party, uh, on on Monday down in in uh, at the Half Moon Putney. Okay. If you, anybody can get there, just join us. We're going to have a lot of fun. It's just a <laughs> it's an all break loose party. <laughs> it's gonna See be why Jerry sounds so well. Why are we still going? Well, we love Literally. you guys. Thank you. You've been Carol, very kind. Save us. <laughs> Go on. Give us a.